Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to perform pixel classification with iLastic. To get started, we go to create new project, we click on pixel classification and it will prompt us to create a new project. I'll just click on save, you can name your project whatever you want and I'll click on replace because I already have a project here but I don't care about that old project. Now we are at the input data stage. Here we select the raw data that we want to use to train the neuronal network to perform the image segmentation. So first we need to select some raw data. So I click on add new and I click on add separate images. Here I usually choose um, about three images. And the important thing that you will have to consider is that you want images where you have objects in them that represent the overall variance in quality, but also the overall variance in your data itself. So every kind of object that you want to classify should be somewhere contained in, in that data you'll use for training. So I'll just choose these, these three images. I open them and here they are. Next, we go to feature selection. And here I will click on select features and I will just select all of those. I can afford this in this case because the data is rather small and I can afford it on my machine. However, the more features you select, the slower the training of the neuronal network will be and also the processing of the batches in the end will be slower. It will also take more RAM. So if you have problems with uh, machine performance on your compu own computer, you might to, uh, consider unselecting some of these. But if you can afford, selecting all of those features will generally improve the performance of the segmentation. And I will just briefly show you these. We don't have to care about them in detail, but essentially each feature is a different um, filtered version in a way of your images. So for example, we have Gaussian gradient magnitude, difference of Gaussians, structure, tensor, eigenvalues. And you see, this is all the same data, but it all looks rather different. But we don't have to care about the details. We will just go now on with training. So we click on training and here we already have two labels prepared. And what I want to classify today, what I want to segment is nuclei. So my first label I call nuclei and the second label I call BG for background, right? Now I have to start um, telling the software what I as a human user think uh, constitutes a nucleus. So I'll just go in here and I say, okay, these pixels, I think all of these pixels belong to a nucleus. The same goes for this one. These pixels here, they all belong to a nucleus. And I usually do this for three objects in the image. I'll go to another one, maybe up here. I'll go here and mark this one. And now we have to also label the background. So one thing I do is usually I just make a swipe through things that are very obviously background, but I also prefer to have background that is right adjacent to an object labeled. Because this sometimes has slightly different features than background that is right out here in the open. Now I will do this for all the images and I will probably fast forward through this because it's rather tedious. So now I'm done labeling. And what we want to do now is we will click on live update. And what this will do is this will uh, train the pixel classifier, the neural network that has to classify the images. And this will already tell us something about how well the neural network is able to classify our training data. So I click live update and it takes a moment, but then what we have here is we have two things um, um, visible, which is prediction for nuclei and prediction for background. I usually don't 
uh, spend a lot of time looking at those, I prefer to look at the segmentation directly. And what you can see here is, I'll quickly turn off my training labels. But what you see here is that these yellow dots, not, these yellow pixels, this is what the neuronal network thinks a nuclear is. So these yellow things, the network things are nuclear, and I think I think it's pretty accurate already. We can go to the other images and check that there's no major errors happening. But this in general looks very good. I go now to the last image. And I just click on this eye here to make um, something visible or invisible. And it looks pretty good. One thing that you should consider doing if you see something that is clearly mislabeled, let's say um, I would be under the impression, I'll quickly uh, untoggle live update. Um, for some reason, I would be under the impression that this really isn't a nucleus. This is, this is some sort of artifact, but my, um, uh, the software labeled it as a nucleus. I can just take this tr this label and I say, no, no, this is background. This is actually background. And this usually helps with the classification. However, this is of course not accurate. So I will go here on erase eraser cursor and I will delete this label because I just made it for demonstration's sake. I don't really think that's accurate. I think this is actually uh, classified properly. This really is a nucleus. So now we're done training. The neural network is trained and the performance on the training data looks pretty good. So now we move on, we go to prediction export. And here we can choose what we want to export later and we can um, uh, choose some settings. I'll just show you the basics of this. Usually I prefer to, uh, as an output, to get the simple segmentation and I click here, choose export image settings. Here you can choose the um, type of the output file. And here you can choose whatever is convenient for yourself, whatever is convenient downstream in your analysis pipeline. I'll just usually, I choose the TIFF. You can also do something with the naming, but I'll just leave this for now. I click OK. And what we can do is we can already export the training results to uh, get a feeling for how, how well, how the training segmentation looks like. But I will not do this for now. I'll straight go to batch processing. And here we can now choose which files are supposed to be processed. And for this, I will click on select raw data files. And now I'm already here with my images. And I will just choose some that have similar quality level. I think these look pretty good. I'll just choose some. I'll choose only, of course, only choose the ones that actually have nuclei in them. I open and now I can click on process all files. And this will give me the simple segmentation results for all of these files. And this will take a moment and I'll of course skip this processing part and I'll get back to you when I have the results. So here are the results of the segmentation and I'll use Fiji to show you these quickly. So here on the left is the data and on the right is the result of the segmentation. And you have to consider this is now um, test data. So this was data that the, that the neural network never saw, it was never trained on. And for test data performance, this is pretty good. Although it is of course not very complicated data. It is simulated data, so it's not very, it doesn't show a lot of variance. But in general, you, you yourself with your data in the end, you always have to consider how diverse are the actual objects that I need classified and how much does the image quality fluctuate? And this, both of these have to be somewhat um, represented uh, in your training data. Otherwise you'll probably have um, performance problems in the end when you need to classify your test data. One thing you might encounter, one problem is that when you open these uh, segmentation results, you pro in Fiji you'll probably first see something that looks like this. And the problem is, or not the problem, but what happens is that we had two labels and you see here in Fiji, down here, you'll see the value of the pixel and you'll see the black pixels here, they have the value one. 
and they have value one because they were they were classified uh, as an object that belongs to label number one, which as you might remember was nuclei. And then the second one, you have background value two. This is the background here, these white pixels. And what you need to do to get the view here, you simply have to adjust the um, brightness like this to see the segmentation results. Now that's it from me. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I will see you in the next one.